and wreck TV. But that goes back to kind of what Dane be saying. You got leaders and followers. And then you got bosses and workers. And Bleak put himself in a, a working position. This MREC TV content will continue after this message. October 7th, the Knockout Kings of Comedy is coming to Baltimore, starring Scroncho from How High, the System Pimp, and also me. Y'all know the host with the most, Mr. Reggie Carroll, and my motherfucking friends. Come on, man. We're going to be at Sully's Comedy Cellar. That's 9306. Yeah, I mean, Harford motherfucking roll. Showtime starts at 8 p.m. sharp. Get y'all tickets right now, man. Tap in. It's your boy Scroncho. Jazzo interview, and, uh, and that bleak interview that on Dream Champs, and we're going we gonna to discuss that briefly right now, and then we're going to go into like a lot more details later and shit because I got to keep going to where I need to go. But um, shout out to Jazzo, man. That's that's a that you did a great interview on uh, Mad Hoffa, man. That was that was that was uh, dope. Um, I think you got your point across with how things went down with you and this guy, with you and Jay. And my uh, the way I see the, the the breakdown of that interview is that you know a lot of people in my box talking about yo everybody's scared to talk about this dude talk about this dude talk about this dude and you kind of you did it on a gentleman level you see what I'm saying like you said what you said on a gentleman level when the nigga got to respect that. Um, to where you know it seemed to be with everybody that seems to have to have a get on an interview and, and, and gotta talk about them it's almost like they can't really say what it is what's, what was the problem or this or he was wrong and that's what's the, that, that's what bothers me most that a nigga can't say that he was wrong so basically what you get from Jazzo is what you get from most of the people that Jay had effect on. And it all boils down to you love him. You love the nigga. You love him. You you love him. That's your that's your folks. That's your you know, you feel like that's your family. That's who your day one was. You you love him. You got love for your for the for, for him. You got love for him. Trust me, I know what that feel like. You even got love on him, yeah. So it's not, but you also can say, yo, you know what I'm saying? I love this nigga and shit. I fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes he do some fucked up shit. You know what I'm saying? That I don't agree with. You know what I'm saying? And that's just plain and simple. Whether I'm a friend to where I can tell him that and it don't be no emotional feelings and shit. You know what I'm saying? Or... I know what type of nigga he is. And you notice in mad interviews that when people talk about him, they say the word, they use sensitive. You know, you know how, you know, he's kind of sensitive. No, nigga, I'm from Best Star Brooklyn. We don't use that. We say nigga acting like a bitch. That's what we say. All that toned down for Hollywood or certain platforms sensitive we never use that you know what i'm saying you either and a nigga would check you on that be in your face yo nah you acting like a bitch period and that's all right it could be your man and you can still have love for him but if you can't say that and a nigga feel some type of way then that ain't your people's you feel me and that's what I respect about that interview with Jazz. I ain't gonna front, you know what I'm saying? You did it in the gen you did it the way Jazzo in Jazzo way. You know what I'm saying? Cause he's always been humbled and he's never been portrayed, never tried to portray himself to be something he not. You know what I'm saying? And I respect that. And that's not the first time Jazzo really mentioned my name when it came to Jay anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's just that it's the first time someone said it on a on a platform. And someone with stature to, to, to co-sign and stamp what it really is. You know what I'm saying? And and what's funny is when they asked him about who taught Jay how to hustle, whatever, and shit, and he said that, you know what I'm saying? The the thing that comes up is 
fuck the haven for caving made man supposed to make statements now i don't know if that's some hate and shit or that's just what he know you feel me because he could have mentioned oh the haven introduced me to the game he should have took the quote of that from the black album but he didn't but that go to show what they actually was talking about when a person say something about you and shit a, a purchase on a certain level and they run off with that say something about you and people only going to remember that that's what people remember me as fuck the haven for caving not the haven introduced me to the game you feel me so that's why my fight out here like nah nigga i ain't that nigga you talking about you know what I'm saying? So that's just a correction. It could be on some hate and shit, or it could be just something that he the only he that's the only thing he know that Jay mentioned when it comes to me on record. When it's so much other music that I've been mentioned on anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I found that ironic. You know what I mean uh, about that? But it was a great interview, man. I had to touch on it and tell Jazz and give Jazz all his flowers, man. And, and that's just what it is. Um. And I loved it, man, because he let he let he let him know, he kind of let us know that he didn't want to participate in shit that wasn't official. Plain and simple. That's 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 just it, bro. That's all you could get from that interview. Was like, yo, um, I'm a day one nigga from a I'm a day one nigga with him that been around him a day one, right? And been around him from day one. And what I contributed and what I gave him is priceless. And if he Jay don't feel that way and not gonna treat him that way, he don't need to be around. And that's that's in all due respect. <laughs> and that's in all due respect. So, like I said, man, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. definitely giving Chazzo his flowers, and, and that's that's what that's what it is. Um, and I see y'all banging Mad Hoffa's uh, comment section down about me being on here. I don't know now. Since that, that's out there, I can't see why I ain't in that lineup, that next lineup. We might as well get it out, get it all out. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it is. So keep banging his uh comments down, man. Let's see, man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas might be thinking about wanting to fuck with me. If not, it's cool. We see what it is. <laughs> and that's what I mean about me telling my story. Me telling my story was so important because, look, he just co having Jazz co-sign that and shit, that, that goes aligned with my story. You feel what I'm saying? That goes aligned with what I'm writing and what I'm on film. And so that makes it all authentic. But when people try to change that shit, that's when I'm going to be standing up. I'm going to have to put my foot on your neck about that. And the next thing I wanted to talk about was the drink champs with uh, Bleak. I never really discussed anything with Bleak because... He's not relevant. Like, he's not really relevant to my story. The only relevancy is that he, you know, he's not relevant to my story. Not meaning like he's a nobody, but it's like, how to put it? Let me start it off with this first, right? I watch Drink Champs. I don't take Drink Champs serious anyway. Because I don't, you know, they, their lineup don't be having, you know, people that have any kind of intellect that I can get something from. Or so they drink it and they smoke it because I, can, I can't take none of them serious. Most of the time, the people that go on there. Um, so with Bleak on there and listening to how Bleak presenting himself, right? From, be, from presenting himself and he's been a day one. Right, a day one around Jay. Not a f people got the whole misconstrued about what day ones is. Some people day ones is nigga. I uh, since I started this business, you've been around me from the start. That's a day one. Since I did this is a day one. Niggas get a lot of shit confused. What day one is right? So when I tell you that Bleak is a day one, Pamp is baby. Pamp has been around Jay. We watched. Bleak grow from a baby, like before I a baby and Pamp is running around the hallway, everything. Right? That's my sister's Bleak's mother is my sister's best friend. Rest in peace, my sister Fleet is my sister's best friend. So we 
we in the same building. So I consider Bleak to be a day one. A day one, a real day one to a point where Jay put on record, Bleak don't have to say do another record or do anything. <laughs> right? Bleak don't have to do anything. Bleak set off for life. Now, we all know that Jay used words and you gotta use crafty and what it means and whatever, whatever, but when you tell someone that and you speak it to the world, like, is that just some shit you saying? Just like that La Familia family shit when everybody is fucked up because they really thought it was a family and it's not a family. It's just some selfish solo shit really going on. So when Bleak say shit like I had to call someone you know what I'm saying to four or five different peoples to get to this, to get to get whatever he needs, whatever, whatever. That is something different. Like that's something different. And I had this discussion with a friend of mine and me and him, we didn't come to agree with each other because I felt like um me and me around a billionaire since I've been a kid, since I've been a child, me around a billionaire, um, not even since I've been a child, but I'm just saying me myself. I, I could never see me having to call Jay or any other person for something I needed <laughs> from Jay. I, I just don't see it. I, I would have never even thought about it because um, I'm looking at it like, you know, does Emery have the same, you know, friendship and relationship with Jay? Does em and, and, and Bleak, who, who do, do, do these guys, Tata, do Tata have to? You know what I'm saying? Uh, make calls and shit to do this shit. Like, I ain't in nobody business, but you can see, like, shit don't make sense. But that goes back to kind of what Dane be saying. You got leaders and followers. And then you got bosses and workers. And it's pretty much Bleak put himself in a position, in a, a, working, a working position. Because it's no way... You're going to consider yourself to have a relationship with this man. It ain't like you using. I'm not into no using, nigga, because first of all, if I was around that shit, I know I would never be calling him for anything because I would already align myself with those same connections. And that's just what it is. I would already have my own lane. So that seemed too far fetched that I got to call him like on some shit that be asking for some shit. But that's me. That's only how I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? That's not how everybody else think because it's obvious. You know, I had a discussion and that person didn't feel that way. Um, you can't, a billionaire can't tell me, yo, bro, you ain't got to do shit. You know, ever you good. It just not me. A billionaire is, he can't tell me that. I'm not a using person or abusing situation, but I'm a use that situation i'm gonna use those words that's gonna benefit me so i don't even have to really use his name i got my own name but i don't expect bleak to be on that level he just he the, the way he's presenting himself and what he said that's the level he wants to be on like he have to make calls to get certain situations and you've been around the man all your life but hey that is what it is. And he wasn't lying about, he said something about, and it's funny because Blake has never mentioned my name at all in nothing. You understand? I ain't mad. He ain't never mentioned my name in nothing. So when he tell you stories about, oh, I was just a little kid and Jay had this and Jay had the air conditioners, only one and this and that, he, he really know where that come from. You know what I'm saying? He, he knows where that come from. He knows that Jay had an OG, right? That Jay had an OG, a big homie, right? But, hey, we, going, we ain't going to stress that. But he wasn't lying when he mentioned about Emery throwing a party, his going away party and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? When he took his time. And that shit put me back to that same time 
that was our trial. While he was while he was throwing parties on on his way and take his time and and doing that, I was in the fucking jail, in prison, but in the law library looking through my case to beat my case, looking through my shit on top of my game plan. You get what I'm saying? So when Bleak say shit like. Yeah, Emery took the weight for that. He took the fall for that. I'm going to have to correct you on that. You know what I'm saying? Emery did his time for what he done. Right? Emery did his time for what he done. And he got greatly compensated for it. If that's what you want to say. Yo, he took took one for the whole team but my question is if Emery took that for the home team what did I do then? and we on the same case it's almost like you guys are saying like I didn't get a bag because I didn't go to prison you understand I didn't get a bag because I didn't go to prison that shit is like bugged out and then only to come home and get accused of some snitching shit or whatever, whatever. And that's where we at now. It's so good now that things are coming out now. And um, I'm starting to see these haters go. Like, I'm looking through my comments. There's not a lot of much haters going on or much more. I'm going to need, like Whack 100 said, now I'm going to need you guys to find some hate and shit. To go on. I need to find some more haters. To attract to my page some more hate mass niggas. I need hate chicks. Um, if you could call some people that you know that uh, specialize in hating, I don't want to lose my haters. Don't want to lose my haters. I need y'all to stick around to make this shit happen. My my, my, my regular supporters and my fans and my people that fuck with me, I, I love y'all too. I need y'all too, but need you haters like whack 100 said shout out whack, shout out whack 100 man he said listen man i'm gonna need y'all to put y'all foot all the way down to the floor on this man get call all the haters man tell them that yo you know what somebody this nigga still talking about that same shit i need y'all to keep doing that because y'all make my numbers go down when y'all not hating like that so i need y'all um so this was just a factual shit that i had to see with that uh you know, with these guys, um, and there's no, no, no situation. I ain't down in bleak, but that's what position he want to hold. That's what it is and shit. That's cool. Um, you know what I mean? I just go, this, it's a funny fact that this dude don't mention me at all. Like, at all. And I'm like, at all. It's just odd. And he's family. You know, when I say he's family, he's like, he's family. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. And that's maybe one of the sensitive things that he that these niggas talk about that Jay don't like. You don't want to give this nigga his flowers. Don't say nothing about that because I don't know. But I just wanted to say that, man. Give Jazzo his flowers and, you know, give my input on these two things, these two interviews that Black Jazzo and Bleak did. <laughs> This three section is a community, all in itself. And in your building is your your neighbors, which is going to be your family. October 7th, the Knockout Kings of Comedy is coming to Baltimore, starring Scroncho from How High, the System Pimp, and also me. Y'all know the host with the most, Mr. Reggie Curl, and my motherfucking friends. Come on, man. We're going to be at Sully's Comedy Cellar. That's 9306. Yeah, I mean, Harford motherfucker. The road showtime starts at 8 p.m. sharp. Get y'all tickets right now, man. Tap in. Subway Squad Show. M, Rack, and Rip. M, Rack, TV.